Um, in the introduction, the processes, and the memory section. And so, I mean, y'all are, we covered all the materials for the test. It'd be really convenient to take the test on Tuesday. I said something about Thursday. So, y'all still want it on Thursday? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to have to start the next stuff, the file stuff. Um, you can't just like, do nothing for an entire class. Uh, but we will still have the test on Thursday. So this is a quick sanity check. Let's see a few more types of problems that might be on that will be on the test um, from the memory side. Okay, so we talked about segmenting. Okay, you can go ahead and you can have fixed blocks of memory, um, and so everything's you know 4K and 4K and 4K and 4K. And if that's the case, then all you have to do is have a page file and say, oh, this door, this is going into, you know, page three or page five. And you take the three times the size of the uh, block, you know the base address, and you're good. Every single um, base address is simply a multiple of that uh, index. And the length of every one of those blocks is already fixed and known. So it's really easy to figure out what the base and the limit is, right? So that's fixed. And that's cool, it's super easy to implement, but you end up wasting space, all right? So we have this internal and external fragmentation idea. Well, another way to do it is to go ahead and say, ah, we're going to use a segment uh, that's dy dynamically created. So if you're gonna do that, then you have to have that base address, and you can't just say, oh, I'm at index five, you know, and say, aha, because it's a fixed size, I know exactly where five is. Now you're going to go ahead and say, oh, if I'm at 5 or if I'm at index 3, um, where does that actually start? And since they're not a fixed size, you have to give, well, and how long is that? So if we do have a table like this, and we give an address, um, logical address, how do you get to the actual fixed physical address? So in this case, let's say we're doing an 8995. We look down there and say, is 8995 between this and this plus 20, uh, 2100? Well, that's going to be between 400 and 2400. Obviously, it's not. Well, is it between 3 and 5? Nope. Is it between 89965 and basically 99965? Yes. 8995 is above the base, but less than the base was length. So we're gonna be in this area right here, right? Now, <coughs> if the base, um, so you go ahead and do your offset, hey, I'm 35 into that, and then you go ahead and calculate from there, saying I know your physical address. So that's the kind of problem we can do with segmented. We can do the same kind of thing with uh, fixed, so you just get a page number, you go ahead and flip off the, the uh, address, and you're good. All right, so let's roll down. Hold on. Yes, so define 8995. Yep. So we first check to see which index, uh, for, for which index is a, both above the base, or is it a, does it need to be below the base or above the base? Okay, well, the base is here. Here's our base, and then if the length is this much, then that's your top. So it's between the base and the base plus the length. Does that make sense? That was great, okay. So it must be greater than or equal to the base and less than or equal to the base plus length. Okay, okay. It's in that range. And what does the part about the lights mean for us? Um, so, you know, if you've got the maximum size of 4 kb, I mean, how, how, how big can your lengths be? Especially if you're, you know, if you're going ahead and doing something where you can only allocate you know, 4 kb slots, maximum 4 kb slots. So this one might be allocated that much, um, that might take the full 4 kb. Any case, this is probably about as difficult as you're going to get on the first step. So, yeah. 
what would, what's the answer to that question? Like, what was it asking? Sorry, I mean, it, that one lost me. Is the answer index two or? Well, it's going to be in two, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's going to be 30, uh, offset of 30. That second one. Okay. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Um, if we have a four, or I'm sorry, one meg block of memory, and we're using the buddy system. So if we start off with one meg, one meg, right? One meg. Um, so what happens after we try and allocate a 70 KB request? Okay, well, again, to the buddy system, we go ahead and say, hey, is there anything free? Yes. Will it fit in what's available? Yes. Will it fit in what's half of what's available? Well, yeah. We can split that into a 512 and a 512, right? Cool. So we're going to put that 70 over here. But can we actually save a little bit more space? Can we split the 512 into a 128 and a 128 and then just put the 70 over here? Well, yeah. Well, let's keep recursively doing that. Can we put it into a 64 and a 64 and put our 70 in one of these little slots? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Let's try this again. Um, 256 and 256. And then at 256, we can actually go into 128. And then we've got the possibility, oh, can we now do it to 64 and 64? Will the 70 fit into a 64? No, we need to stop at this point. We're not going to split it there. So the 128, 70 of it is going to be process A. All right, so now we go down to process B, and we need 35 KB. Well, is there anything free over here? Yeah, there is. We're going to look over here. Well, is there anything free over here? Yes, there is. Is there anything free here? Yes, there is. There's actually. Um, uh, let's see, we've got 128. So um, this 70 of it's used, and this is fragmented. So our 70, our 35, is going to go into this block. Okay. Now, of this 128, can we split it into 64 and 64, and it still fit our 35? Yep. So we'll split it to 64, 64. So 64. 64. Now we're potentially put it to this side. Can we go ahead and split it into 32 and 32? No, because we need 35, right? So we're going to put it here, and we're going to say, okay, we're going to split this into, um, I'm sorry, we leave it to 64. We're going to allocate uh, 35 of it to B. Okay, again, we go to C, and C we need 80. So we're going to end up taking our uh, 256 here, 128, we can't go to 64. So we're going to allocate 80 of this to C. Um, at this point, we're going to free A. So that A goes away. So this is now a whole 128 that's free. Then we get a request for 60. Well, guess what? 60 can go into this thing we just freed. As a matter of fact, we can now split it into a 64 and a 64. We'll put D here, and D is going to use most of that 64. Uh, da, 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 da. Request B. We're going to free B. So then we go back over here. We're going to get rid of B. Now, since we have two contiguous there, I'm sorry, two contiguous here on the same node, we can actually re-put those back together. So now we have a whole 128. And then finally, so that was free, we need to be free C. 
And so again, we pre C here. So these two were contiguous. They get put together. Now these two are contiguous. And these two are contiguous, and they get put, they get put together. Uh, so anyways, so that's sort of the idea there. All of this can be done as a binary tree. So you could just as easily have written this as, here was our original one meg. We split it into 512 and 512, our two sides here. Eventually, we went ahead and split that into 256 and 256. We split that into 128, 128. And eventually, this one went down to 64 and 64. This one is actually used with process D. Uh, everything else is free and available. So we have an available node here, available, available, and available. So either way you want to look at it, um, that's the kind of question you get. Questions? Wait, so for a tree structure, yeah. um, after B is free, so um, we split our memory first into the two black holes, and that's our first node, or our first, like our parent splitting, right? Yep, let's just start it over from scratch. New would be, yeah. so we started it with zero. So we've got one meg, uh, right, right. Uh, one meg. Yeah, and then you split it into. All right, we come back, we get A. A requests 70, mm -hmm. right? So we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna split it into 512 and 512. Mm -hmm. But if we only need 70, can we split that again? Yeah, so we're going to do this into 256 and 256. Can we still split this one? Mm -hmm. Yep. So 128, 128. Can okay, we go to 64? No, to be 70, right? So we're going to put process A here uh, with 70. Okay. Now, uh, after B is free, so. We do B, B is going to end up, we can split this one into 64, 64. We get C, uh, request 80. So 80 is over here, 128, 128. So we got our C. Uh, we free A. So this goes back, this is freed. We can't merge these two because that's in there. So that's just going to be free. Um, create a D gets 60. Well, now we can split this into 64, 64 because of D. Just make it clear that's a B. Um, so now we free B. B is over here. The 64, 64 can get combined, so it goes back to 128. So that's basically the state it would be at where uh, after B is free. Does that make sense? Yes? Do you show that step by step on the exam, or do you just want the final product? No, this is, this is all I'm looking for, this or this. Now, if you want to write in each step that makes it easier for you, that's fine. But if you just want to write that and then erase, that's fine too. Yes? So for part A, um, Whenever there's two like empty spots next to each other, yeah. um, you recombine those, right? Absolutely. So because all four of the memory blocks have been free, would it not just go back to the way it started? Uh, did we free D, free C? This free A is in there as well. D. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If we freed all of them, as soon as we free D, and that's going to go back and say, oh, we've now merged the 64, 64. Oh, well, those are now together. We can free those, that's combined, therefore that's combined, therefore they're all back to one. I missed something. In any case, yeah, if they're all free, it's obviously going to go back to the one that. So, so you would just draw that? You would just draw the top of the binary tree? Um, well, it depends on whether you're asking for a block answer or the binary tree answer. In the binary tree answer, you want something that looks like this. Uh -huh. On this one, you just look that. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, okay, so if we chose, like, if we said you wanted the tree representation after C was free, mm -hmm. would that just be the parent node? 
because then everything else would collapse, right? Right. Um, so yeah, we would just it would just be that. Okay. Okay. But it looks the way it does because we're stopping before we read D and C. Right. right. Okay. So I mean, basically, the three ways I can ask it is um, show me the final state of block. Show me the final state in tree, or I can say, you know, show the tree, you can say each step, but more likely here, show each step. So what you'd see is you'd see the this one, then this one, then maybe this one, uh, and again you can see like A. Um, so I mean you could say I want each step. Or you know, to show all the work, or to say, give me the final state. Okay. Um, so uh, fixed versus dynamic. Okay. When we're doing our, our partitioning or our paging, you know, we have fixed size blocks and we have dynamic block. What are the advantages and disadvantages? Of um, what's the next one? Talks to that. Um, what is internal fragmentation versus external fragmentation? Uh, we talked a lot about placement algorithms. So if you do have memory, and you do have some fragmentation, how can you fix that? Well, what's the very expensive but easy way to fix fragmentation? It's a defragment. Defragment, right? Compact it. But the other thing is, if I have A here, and B here, and C here, uh, where do I put, if I've got an E coming in, do I put it here, do I put it here, do I put it here, do I put it here? And so there's various placement algorithms, putting the first slot, the next slot, the best slot, the worst slot, so what are the advantages or disadvantages of doing something like that? Uh, so that's placement. So that's one option. The other one is replacement. So I've got all these things in here, and I've got a new process D coming in. So because of the CPU or whatever, I've got to get something out. I've got to kick the process out. Which one do I choose? Okay. And so what are some of the algorithms that you can use for replacing things? So if I have process A, B, and C, and I've got to kick one of them out, how do I choose which one to pick, which one to kick out? You can have a Q, which is gonna be first in, first out, right? What's another option? The oldest access. The oldest? least recently used LRU. Any other thoughts? Okay, there's like five of them. Uh, so another five, what are advantages and disadvantages? Okay, so that's replacement algorithms. Okay, what is a working set? If I've got a um, program, and I split that program up into here's the, this uh, this part of the code, this part of the code, this part of the code, this part of the code. I'm swapping in pages of that code. <coughs> what is the working set? Like actually being used by the CPU. The actual pages that are being used in the program, right? So I may have a hundred page program, but because of the for loops and because of the data, I may only run page one, page two, and page 67, right? So do I have to have all 100 pages in memory for this thing to run? How many pages do I have to have in memory? Just the, one seven. Just the three, right? And the three pages that I have to have, that's my working set. Now, if I have 10 pages available and the program has a working set size of three, is it gonna run efficiently? If I have 10 free slots, and I only need three of them, is it gonna run efficiently? Great, what if we swap them? 
What if I have three open slots and I have a working set size of 10? It's going to pull in the first one, pull in the second one, pull in the third one. As soon as it goes to the fourth, it's going to kick the first one out, put the fourth one in, and then it's going to eat the first one, so it's going to kick, kick the second one out. It's going to call, go back and forth. It's called crashing, right? So if your working set size is bigger than the available resources, you're going to end up with thrashing. Thrashing. Thrash. 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 Yeah, that's that's. You go out and you get something, and you put something else in, and then you have to go out and get that one and put that one back in. So you end up most of your time is spent swapping in and out the code instead of actually executing. Um, and again, paging versus segmentation. You know, paging, fixed size blocks, segmentation, fixed size blocks. So if you know those, then you will you pretty much have everything. Now, um, I'm like brain dead because I'm in the middle of my top exams, so I didn't get a chance to do a really nice review for y'all, what I'm planning on doing today. So instead, uh, what I did instead is I just made all the notes available to you. So you can now get all the slides for introduction, process, and memory. So I apologize for not putting that review together, but hopefully having all those slides from all the lectures makes sense. Everybody good with that? Hopefully, I won't have to do that next time. Uh, all right, so last time when we looked at this, 